I wish everyone with a Medicare supplement plan knew what we will talk about in this video because it would save a whole lot of trouble. Now, a huge draw to buying a Medicare supplement plan is that you're told you can use any doctor in the country that participates with Medicare. And then the first time you call your new doctor's office and tell them about your shiny new Medicare supplement plan, they tell you that they do not work with that insurance plan. And no, I did not misspeak. I am not referring to Advantage plans. I'm saying supplement plans are getting rejected and here's how you can prevent this from happening to you. The first thing we have to understand is that just because a doctor participates with Medicare does not mean that this doctor has to accept new patients. There are several reasons why this could happen, including the fact that we have a shortage of medical professionals in our country, a provider may be moving or retiring, or money, meaning some providers won't accept new patients with certain coverages because they get paid significantly less for these patients with certain plans like Medicare or others. So if you are new to this doctor's office, you've heard wonderful things about, but they don't have the capacity or desire to accept new patients, they may tell you no. And in this example, they aren't denying your Medicare supplement plan, they're simply denying the acceptance of new patients. Always call ahead and make sure that they are taking new patients. If it's a doctor that you've had for a long time, I would still encourage you to have a conversation letting them know that you are now on Medicare. Okay, the next potential cause for this unfortunate Medicare supplement denial problem lies in healthcare terminology. Here are five healthcare terms. See if you can tell which mean the same and which means something different. I have Medicare. I have a Medicare supplement. I have Medigap. I have Plan G. I have Part G. I have Supplemental Insurance. How many of those have the exact same meaning? The answer? Just two. Medicare is the overarching federal healthcare program for seniors and certain classes of people. Having original Medicare coverage, we'll say, is like having soda pop. This isn't an airtight analogy, but we're going with it. Now, Medicare supplement and Medigap are the two terms that mean the same thing, but these are categories within the overarching Medicare system, sort of like Coke and Coca-Cola. They're terms that mean the same thing, but Coke is a subclass of soda pop. You can't have a Coke without also having soda pop. You can't have a Medigap plan without also having original Medicare. Plan G is a flavor of Medicare supplement plan, sort of like Cherry Coke. Still Coke, but it's a specific flavor, and there are other flavors like Plan N, High Deductible Plan G, and others. Part G isn't anything. There is no such thing as a Part G in the Medicare discussion. Part G only exists in those IKEA instructions, and even then it seems like Part G is somehow missing from there too. And finally, supplemental insurance is not directly tied to Medicare. It covers more categories than just Medicare, sort of like we'll say it's coffee. It's still a beverage, but it's not a soda, and you don't need soda to get coffee. Supplemental insurance could include dental, vision, life insurance, a cancer policy, and a bunch of other different types of insurance. You can get supplemental insurance products at any age and without needing Medicare. It's just an additional insurance offering outside of your normal major medical insurance. Okay, so we've addressed problem number two. As you are communicating with your provider's office, you both may be using some of these words, but the provider may not be thinking of the same definition that you are, which ties into problem number three. The third potential problem that would cause your doctor to reject your Medicare supplement plan is if you just show your Medicare supplement plan card. Or maybe this is a conversation over the phone where they ask for your insurance company and you just say your Medicare supplement insurance company. The provider may not know that you have Medicare as well. Medicare is your primary payer. This means that Medicare pays first, and then your Medicare supplement plan pays second after Medicare has done its part. If you give them the Medicare supplement plan information only and they bill that first, that gets rejected. So this issue comes when you don't present both your Medicare card and your Medicare supplement plan card. Just be sure to let them know that Medicare is your primary coverage, show them your red, white, and blue card, and then let them know that you also have a Medicare supplement plan with its own card. Because we have a fourth potential issue here. The fourth potential problem lies in the fact that there are dozens, if not hundreds, of different insurance companies all across the country. On top of the total number, each insurance company can offer several different types of health insurance plans. Insurance companies can have plans through the individual marketplace, plans for Medicaid, co-op plans, commercial plans for companies to offer their employees, Medicare Advantage plans, Medicare supplement plans, and others. The point is, there are a lot of different types of health insurance plans out there. So when we look at your providers, they do not contract or agree to work with 
every insurance company out there. And even if they do work with a particular insurance company, that contract does not always include all of the plan types that that insurance company offers. These provider billing offices have a list where when you show them your insurance card, they will check your insurance against their list of companies that they work with. If you are working with somebody in the billing department that doesn't interact with Medicare often, or maybe they are new, and you show them your Medicare supplement plan card, they may check it, not see your company on their list of approved insurance carriers, and say that they don't accept your insurance. But guess what? Medical billing professionals, if you participate with Medicare, you do not get to pick and choose which Medicare supplement plans you work with. You must work with all Medicare supplement plans, even if you do not normally work with that particular insurance company. The next problem that we need to check off the list comes when your Medicare supplement plan is with a smaller, maybe more regional insurance company that doesn't have a big national brand. Providers in the area of that insurance company's headquarters may know who they are, but if you have one of these plans and you visit a hospital out of the area or out of the state, those providers won't know who this different insurance company is and they will assume that they can't work with them. If you have a Medicare supplement plan with a smaller insurance company, that isn't always a bad thing. It will still pay for its responsibility. And oftentimes those smaller insurance companies leverage things like strong customer service, quicker payments of claims or low rates. So just because your doctor's office hasn't heard of your company, that doesn't mean that it's a bad company and that you should ditch it for one of the big insurance names. I would highly recommend working with your agent on this one. All right, the last common issue is related to the last one and it happens when you do have a Medicare supplement plan with one of the big national insurance companies and the provider office does not work with that insurance company for all those other medical plan types. So they think and they say that they don't work with that big company because they don't for all those other plan types. But in this case, they would still need to accept your Medicare supplement plan, even with the insurance company that they don't normally work with. So if you encounter any of these problems, and I have to say it is completely warranted for you to be frustrated because you heard that supplement plans were taken by anyone who participates with Medicare, I promise you that your agent wasn't lying to you, your insurance company wasn't lying to you, and your favorite YouTube channel wasn't lying to you either. There was just a miscommunication somewhere along one of the areas that we covered, and knowing this will only help remove potential headaches for you in the future. If you are feeling like Medicare is crazy complicated, but this video helped clear things up a bit and your knowledge of Medicare and retirement is expanding, subscribing to this channel is a no brainer, but there is a video right here that I think that you'll really like and it will keep that rush of knowledge going for you. I will see you over there.